brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Hey, so kind of a weird situation. Need to get some advice from you guys. Um, so here's the gist of it. Uh, my wife and I are currently in the process of looking to buy our first home. Um, we are debt free and have always been, been a big, big fan, big believer of just doing things debt free. And we are actually in the position to pay the house entirely with cash. Way to go. House poor. Awesome. Yeah. So we are, are super nervous, excited. It, it's as um, most people can know, it's a huge purchase. Um, but we're getting some pushback from friends and family, mainly because uh, one of the main arguments is that that can be put into investment more um, in the market instead of uh, just buying a house the normal way and doing a, a mortgage. So, um, it, so, so what they're saying is if you had a paid-for house, what these people are saying is if you had a paid-for house, you should go borrow on it and put the money in mutual funds. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me help you with this. We did the largest study of millionaires ever done in North America. Detailed, airtight research. The conclusions we came to in that study have been so thoroughly vetted and the research methodology was so tight that if you don't agree with the conclusions of that study, you're what's known as wrong. Because this is data, it's facts. Okay? We studied 10,167 millionaires. The vast majority of the people that had a one to a five million dollar net worth were com- like 85, 88 percent of them were composed of a healthily funded 401k plan mm-hmm. that ends up with you know seven, eight hundred thousand bucks in it, and a paid off home of seven or eight hundred thousand bucks. So that's a million five, million six net worth. The Mm -hmm. number of millionaires that we interviewed out of the 10,167 that used your broke family and friends idea, they're broke people, by the way. I know this Mm -hmm. because their theory they're using makes them broke, okay? The number of millionaires that we interviewed that said we became a millionaire by taking our paid-for house and borrowing on it and putting the money in mutual funds. The number of millionaires that said that out of 10,000 was precisely zero. None of them became millionaires doing what your, I'll be nice, ill-informed, ignorant friends and family are saying. That was nice. That was like a Hallmark card. Yeah, that was nice. That's so sweet. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to call them all kinds of names. But I'll just call their ideas stupid and inaccurate and they're trying to influence you so these people don't get a vote whoever they are just go ahead and write their name down in the column of don't get a vote on money because they don't know what they're doing Hmm. they don't there's no one we couldn't find a one out of ten thousand josh that did what your people are telling you to do that's how dumb the idea is it wasn't like it was only 70% of them and 30% did your friend's plan. No, no. Mm-hmm. None of them. Not one. That's how dumb the idea is. It's like the number of them that became millionaires with their airline miles was precisely zero. The number of them that thought that leasing a car was a great idea there was actually a couple of those. There was there was more of those than your idea, which is also a stupid idea, by the mm. way. But there was you know there's probably fifteen or twenty out of ten thousand that thought leasing a car was a good idea. But most of this is the kind of stuff we discovered. So the the what the suggestion is so asinine that it's preposterous. Does that help you at all? Yeah. No, it does. We're just. We've we've literally looked at or heard your show for a while, and it's one of those things of we always have gotten excited when people say, hey, we, we've gotten out of debt. We've never been there. We've paid off our mortgage. We've never been there. So as we're walking through this, we just want to make sure that we're making wise decisions in that. Um, okay, here's yeah, the thing. So Go pay cash for your house, and if you hate it, then you can get a mortgage. <laughs> Sounds good. Try that one. I mean, you know, 
It's, but I, I've never had anybody goes, you know, I really hate being debt free. I, I, people get pissed at me about a lot of stuff, but none of them are pissed at me about paying off their house. None of them. I mean, yeah. it's just, you know, it's, it's, I get, I like that. I, you gave him the option to get the mortgage after he paid the house off. That's great. That's, that's kind of a, Hey, give it a shot. You know, scratch hey, and sniff, you know, if, if um, you know, if, if you lose 30 pounds and you hate it, you can get fat again. It's not hard. <laughs> it is true. And, it's and, re- getting fat's easier than yeah, losing the weight. Isn't I'm telling that true. It's so true. So, I mean, it's not. If you, if you too. hate it, you know, if you cut up all your credit cards and you get out of debt and you hate it, just wait about 10 seconds and there'll be 14 credit cards in your mailbox. Yeah. You don't have to worry. They'll send them right back to you. They, mm-hmm. they, it's not like you broke up with them and they're mad. They just, they'll, they'll come back for more and they'll up your everything. Mm-hmm. Oh God. Yeah. I mean, it's sh- try it, try something different it, folks. And listen, you got to th- listen. If broke people are making fun of your financial plan, it's always a good sign. If fat people are making fun of your health and fitness plan, that's a good sign. It's a good sign. You know, it's just, um, it, it, you know, if people that are have been married six times don't like the way that you treat your husband or your wife because you're nice to them, and, and you know, yeah, then it's, great it's a good sign. Yeah, if their kids are hoodlums yeah. and they're making fun of how strict you are. Yeah, it's a you good might sign. Be doing something right. It's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good sign. You mean you don't allow your children? That's right. I don't. All right, nor so, my grandchildren, nor my dog. You know. All right, so like, Dave, for the new people who are slightly cynical, where does the theory come from? From the people that you you just dismantled it, but I think it'd be fun for you to explain. Well, if you borrow the, the money, at, you borrow the money at prevailing interest rates six percent. Okay, that's right. And you put it in a good mutual fund at eleven percent. People think you're making a five percent spread. There, well, you're there not. It is. You're not. You're not because you got to pay taxes on your gains. And so if you make 11% on your money, mm-hmm. you know, you got to pay taxes on, le- on that 11%. And so the, so your spread is reduced by the taxes on 11%, which in a 30% tax bracket would be about three points. So your five is now two. Okay. And so you're doing all this crap for 2% spread net of taxes. It's very tax inefficient to start with. And um, if you did all that and you net, net it of taxes, then you have not adjusted for risk because 100% of the foreclosures occur on a home with a mortgage. And you've not mathematically adjusted for risk. When you adjust for taxes and risk, you don't even make money in this theory. But the naive formula is, oh, I'm, I'm making 11 or 12 and I've only paid six. I'm making the spread. No, you're not. You're just naive. You just don't know how this crap works. That's all it is. Create your free every dollar budget today, the simplest way to budget for your life.